Hi and welcome back to my channel. Can you solve this problem here? We've got a circle touching three squares with different areas. Can you find the radius of the circle? If you want to have a go at this problem, uh, pause the video now because I'm going to go through my solution in three, two, one. So the first thing that I wanted to do quite naturally is to put the side lengths on these squares because they're all squares, the square numbers, as I said just a second ago, they're going to be nice numbers. So I put the seven, the eight and the nine on there and wherever and whenever you've got a circle, you will want to draw the radii on the circle to key points. So I've drawn them to the top left and the well top right of the squares um, and the top of the middle square, that blue one. Now, because that side uh, of the top of the blue square is just touching the circle, that's going to be a tangent, so we are going to have right angles there. What I then wanted to do, and this is kind of the key to getting stuck into and start solving this problem, really, is creating these triangles here. Now, if you have a look at the heights or the difference in heights of these squares, we get 1 and 2 uh, because we're going from 7 to 8 and uh, 7 to 9. Um, and then if we have a look at what would be therefore the height of the triangles, well, the uh, we've got a radius and then we're going to subtract these two individual heights. So we're going to get R minus 1 and R minus 2. So we've got two sides of both triangles in terms of R. Now, the next thing is, I could introduce another variable uh, for the base. Now, they have to add up to 7, so I could call one x and the other one 7 minus x. And we just need to check, well, actually, are we going to get two equations to be able to solve uh, for two variables? Because if we've got two equations, simultaneous equations will solve for two variables. Now, actually, we will get that because we've got two right angled triangles and so what we can do is we can use Pythagoras and get these two equations here. So that's 7 minus x all squared plus r minus 1 all squared equals r squared and r minus 2 all squared plus x squared equals r squared. Now, when you've got uh, equations where there are squares involved or, um, you know, any other higher powers and it's a little bit more complicated like this one, what you want to do is uh, rearrange it so that we've got one of the variables as the subject. So I'm going to just get rid of the diagram here, simplify it all and just think about these two equations. I'm going to make x the subject using the second equation here. So I'm going to take the r minus 2 all squared over to the other side. I'm going to simplify it, so I'm going to expand the bracket. I'm then going to collect all the terms of me careful when you're subtracting the whole bracket. I'm going to subtract r squared, subtract the minus 4r, and subtract 4. So if I do that, I get x squared equals 4r minus 4. I'm going to factorise that before I square root just to make things a little bit nicer. And then I'm going to square root the 4 and the r minus 1. Now square root 4 is easy, that's 2. And square root r minus 1 is easy as well. We're just going to leave it as square root r minus 1. Now I've got to leave that as positive. Uh, usually when you square root something, a plus or minus, but x needs to be a positive number because it's a length. So I'm not going to write down the negative version here because that doesn't matter. Okay, next we are going to use these two equations. So the rearranged one and the original one, which I'm now going to substitute into. So I do that and I get this. 7 minus 2 square root r minus 1 all squared plus r minus 1 all squared equals r squared. And at this point, I'm slightly concerned in the fact that I've got an r minus 1 uh, in the square root and an r squared and how I might have to deal with that because I don't really want anything which has got a, you know, a high power if I'm squaring things again to get rid of the square root, you know, like r to the power of 4 and so on. But let's see what happens. So I expand the brackets and we get this. Then we need to collect the like terms. So I'm going to add the 1 on together and I'm going to expand the bracket with a 4 brackets r minus 1. Okay, we've got this. Because of expanding that bracket, I need to collect the like terms again. And now I've collected my like terms as much as I can. I'm going to cancel the r squareds out. Okay, take r squared away from both sides. And then I'm going to put the square root on the other side of the equation. I'm going to separate it out into the square root on one side and everything else on the other side. And then what I can do quite nicely is square both sides. And that gives me this which 
is a lot of, you know, bigger numbers, but don't worry about that because hopefully we should be able to simplify everything in a second. And because I've got the 4R squared, again, I'm hoping I can divide everything by 4. But I'm going to collect all my terms first of all, and I'm going to put the 4R squared at the front, just so it's got the usual layout. I'm then going to divide it all by 4, and I'm going to get R squared minus 150R plus 725 equals 0. I'm then going to factorise it, or you can use quadratic formula or your calculator to solve this. But factorising it gives you this. And that means that the solutions are 145 or 5. Now, 145, does that seem right? I need to check my original equations and the diagram. Would that work? Does that make sense? Well, actually, 145 is not possible because with the diagram that we've got... Um, x, which we've said x has to be positive, but x also has to be less than 7. And if we used r as 145, you end up with x is 24, which doesn't really make any sense. So we can't have 145, and that means that the only solution is r equals 5. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you tried it yourself, you were able to get the same solution. If you did enjoy it, please drop a like down on the video, and consider subscribing to the channel, because I release a new video, problem-solving video, every single week showing you my solution. Uh, something to just get you, get you thinking, and uh, encourage you to really get engaged with maths. Okay, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next week for another video. Till then, bye-bye.